We know that GP2B3A inhibitors do reduce ischemic outcomes after PCI, but it's been a long time since they've been introduced, and certainly a lot of things have happened in PCI and advancements since then. So are they still an option? Oddly enough, up until about now, there's not been a whole lot of data to answer this question. So I'd like to introduce you to David Safley, MD, interventional cardiologist at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart and Vascular Institute. Now, this particular look at uh, NCDR data comes from clinical outcomes following glycoprotein 2B3A inhibition in PCI for acute coronary syndrome. Why did you do this study, first off? Um, well, first off, thanks for having me. And it just has developed into there's so many options now for antithrombotic therapy and antiplatelet therapy that I just was interested in the exact question you just uh, mentioned, which was, does this still work given what we have today compared to what we had when these were first introduced? I was just curious to know how they really played out in the modern era. So what data did you sift through? Well, so this is the NCDR um, data from 2009 to 2011, so it really is a fairly recent body of work, and uh, we s included everyone who had an acute coronary syndrome or a myocardial infarction during that time, so elective PCI was not included. It was a, about just about a million. It was one and a half before we excluded the elective cases, so 970,000 maybe. And what did you find? Well, um, the short story is that about a third of them still get 2B3A antagonists. Um, uh, and about a half of people are treated with bivalirudin. And about 20% of the people who got a 2B3A inhibitor had bivalirudin. So taken all told, the people who got a 2B3A had a lower risk of in-hospital death than the people who didn't get a 2B3A antagonist. So is this universally applied, or do you think there are specific people, Dr. Safley, who should be candidates. And that really is the question. And we uh, are, are in the midst of trying to sift through the subgroup analysis to look at that. And um, we specifically wanted to look at a few groups. One was ST elevation MI versus unstable angina and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. We wanted to look at people treated with heparin and compare them with people treated with bivalirudin. Um, and then uh, we also wanted to compare um, access sites, so radial and femoral access site, given the current interest in radial access for these cases. And then we actually risk stratified uh, these uh, bleeding and mortality outcomes by bleeding risk scores and mortality risk scores that were both developed in the NCDR. We found that uh, really patients treated with heparin seemed to do much better when they had a 2B3A antagonist, while it didn't seem to help a lot with the bivalirudin patients. Um, the femoral access patients also seem to do quite a bit better, and while it trended better in the femoral patients who were treated with heparin, or excuse me, in the radial patients treated with heparin, there was such a small number, only about 6% of the pe people included in this analysis had a, a radial artery access. I'm not sure that was a really a valid um, comparison. Uh, as far as bleeding goes, bleeding was increased in all groups, as you might imagine, uh, although uh, really statistically significantly more so in the moderate and high-risk patients for bleeding rather than the low-risk patients. Um, mortality played out the same way, with the lower the mortality risk, the lower the benefit, but high-risk patients definitely seem to get a mortality benefit from the uh, GPI as well. Any indicators as to why some people did well and some did less so? Any mechanisms here? Any understanding of why? My take on it is, is really, I think, when it comes down to the, the antithrombotic used. 80% uh, of the people who got a 2B3 antagonist got heparin. And I think what I kind of take away from this is that if you're going to treat unstable angina or myocardial infarction patients with heparin, they probably need a 2B3 antagonist as well. Um, you know, with Horizons AMI and, and uh, that data, we, we know that bivalirudin uh, itself seems to do just as well, maybe with less bleeding. But in this analysis, uh, roughly half of patients with unstable angina or myocardial infarction are still treated with heparin in the United States. Um, and I think that if they're going to be treated with heparin, they probably should be treated with a 2B3 antagonist. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, for CardioSource World News, we have a lot of coverage from the ACC 13 meeting, which is where we're at in San Francisco. Please look at our special supplement. And for Dr. Safley, I'm Rick McGuire, the executive editor.